Well, it's been a while since we made some videos together, hasn't it? And uh, I, I'm sorry about that. I've been pretty busy um, with a lot of other things that I'm doing. But today we're going to be discussing intervalometer. And it's going to be a lot of fun because it's a little bit of photography, a little bit about 3D printing, a little bit about wiring you know, some electronics together, a little bit about some sensors that we've attached to the intervalometer, and also some Arduino code that I've done to get all of this together. Now I'll show you the box that I've made and this is the intervalometer. So this is a 3D printed box, little switch, and inside of here is an ESP8266, which is basically an Arduino on steroids, mainly because it has the Wi-Fi attachment already on it. So since I wanted something that's remotely triggered, that was my choice that I did. Now an intervalometer uh, in today's technology might seem a little bit archaic, but most modern DSLR cameras today already have a built-in intervalometer, and that works really good. It doesn't have the trigger capability that I'm, I built into this particular one, but you do have some uh, capabilities inside modern cameras. But, you know, some of us don't have that particular type of camera. So, an intervalometer is a way for us to take photos in number of photos over a period of time separated by a time lapse. So if I want to do stop action photos, what I want is to be able to set up a system so that I can take, let's say, 50 photos every five seconds, take one photo until I get all 50 done. That's what an intervalometer will do for you. Another thing an intervalometer will do for you is you can say, okay, I want you to do these 50 photos, but don't start for maybe half an hour. So that in the half an hour, it's going to start doing the 50 photos separated by whatever time period you selected. In my case, I said five seconds. What would you use this for? Well, a lot of times, one of the things uh, that I particularly use it for is stop action photography of like say flowers and growth. I had a really nice one where I had tulips where I started the velometer up in the early morning with the tulips closed and by and maybe took a photo every five minutes until the end of the day and uh, that worked out really nice and you can see the tulips you know come in open up bloom and then go back down again in the evening. And that was kind of cool. Another use is, uh, well, you know, I did one that was a snow stop. Uh, it started snowing, so I started it up first thing as soon as I saw it starting snow. And then, you know, maybe two hours later when it was all done, we had all of the uh, uh, snowfall shown. So it was a very nice stop action. Now, down here, I'm going to show you a little stop action. This isn't a very long one, but it's me walking around the shop. And this is one of the things that the intervalometer does. And you can see that. See, that was quick and fast, but it's, it's kind of a fun thing to do. Well, I also like to watch birds, and uh, most intervalometers, you start, you're, you're there, you're, you're at the unit pressing a button to do it. Well, you can't do that when you're watching birds, you want to get a close-up shot of birds, so an intervalometer in that particular case would come in handy if it had a remote trigger by wireless. So. This is what I have. With the ESP8266, I can set up the camera outside, uh, put my intervalometer outside by the camera, point it at the, whatever the birds are that's going to be, uh, you know, which I got some bird food out there, and uh, get it all focused up and ready. I can go inside the house and wait. And as soon as I see the uh, birds, you know, show up at the bird feeder, I can press the intervalometer and tell it to fire off, and voila, the, uh, I'm going to get the picture that I want uh, without being, uh, you know, have to have a super telephoto lens in order to get a close-up shot of that. So that's one thing. Then the other thing is, well, I don't want the intervalometer to be triggered until something 
activates it. So that requires a sensor. So I built this interferometer over here with the capability to have three sensors. You know, the first sensor was ultrasound, and uh, well, that's a flop. <laughs> it's it works, and uh, but it's not a very good sensor for you know in our price range. I thought uh, it does work, and it did work. The second sensor I used was uh, something called a PIR. Now PIR is passive infrared. And it's a great sensor. Uh, it doesn't trigger until something passes in front of it, but you have no thing of distance. So you, you know, whether it's something close or something far away that walks into its vision, it'll trigger the inner barometer and then it'll start off the process. Okay, and then the last thing I did, which is what I got mounted over here on my box, is a LiDAR V3. Uh, this is from Garmin. And it uses a laser rangefinder, which is a time of flight sensor. It is extremely accurate, and it will go considerable distance. But the only problem is, is this is a pretty expensive. So the ultrasound sensors that I could put on this thing is around five bucks tops. The lidar is maybe two or three bucks. The I, I'm sorry, the PIR sensor is two or three bucks. The LiDAR that I'm using is $125 for this particular sensor, but it's extremely accurate. So you can, when, when I have that set up, it will trigger if I, well, the way I set this thing up is, and in software, and I'll show you very shortly, is that you can have anywhere from a, a min to a max. And you can set up that range and say that any time that I get any object that passes between these two points, I will trigger off the intervalometer. And I thought that was kind of cool. So I'll show you how I did all that. So to summarize, this was a very fun project. I did a 3D print on the box. And, uh, well, Let's get right into, you know, some of the schematics and I'll show you what, what to do. So this is the schematic for the intervalometer that I've done. And uh, we'll just go over some sections over here. First of all, this section over here is the ESP8266. And its connections is pretty basic. Uh, shouldn't shouldn't be very difficult for you to see what's going on over there. Now the power connection, though, what I did is I have a nine volt battery over here that I can plug into this jack, and it goes through um, a voltage regulator 7805 into this jumper. Now because we want to program the ESP8266 from the computer. You can't have two VCC sources, so you pull out the jumper before you put the USB port into the ESP8266 for programming. Then once you're ready to use it, you can pull out the ESP8266, I mean you can pull out the USB from the ESP8266, put in the jumper, and now you can power it from the 9 volt battery. So that's what that is particularly for. Now let's look over here, and this is the uh, area of interest for the camera. I have two NPN transistors that use uh, a plug that I've made to fit into the Canon camera. Now all DSLRs usually have two buttons. One button is for focus, and one button is for shutter. Even if you think you only have one button on your system, if you press it, it always goes focus first and then shutter. So that's what this does. So now these two lines are connected up into the, as you can see here, into the ESP66. Okay, now let's talk about the ultrasound. The ultrasound requires 5 volts ground a trigger and the echo going back out. So I made a jack up that plugs into the ultrasound sensor. That's what this is for. 
and you go up to the LiDAR and the LiDAR sensor, which is the laser, it re goes on the SCL and SCA bus lines. So you can put a lot of other peripherals, if you so desire, on this particular line. But uh, I only have the LiDAR sensor on it right now. And I also have two 4.7K resistors over here. And what that does is just does the pull-up um, to keep the lines um, at the correct levels. The LiDAR, the PIR sensor, is very easy. It requires a voltage, which is on pin 1, and then um, you got a ground. And when this sensor trips, it's going to do a PIR detect, and that's a high signal, and the system is going to detect that and fire off whatever it is that it does. So it's not that complicated here. Most of it, most of the complication is in the software. All right, now let's talk about the software. Um, I've done a lot of uh, web-based software before in my last big project with the Arduino was a light control system for uh, controlling my outside solar lights. So I had a nice basic web thing already started, so all I did is enhanced it. So when you log on to your intervalometer, this is the web page that will come up. Now let's talk about this tab. The main tab is camera. And in this camera, you can see all the parameters that we're going to be discussing. The first one here is delay before starting. So you can set that up for any number of seconds. So you can set it up for a thousand seconds, you can set it up for zero seconds. And this is the delay before we start using the intervalometer. The next button here tells us how many photos we want to take. So if I want to take eight photos, okay, no problem whatsoever. So I set this up for, let's say, let's say, you know, ten photos for our particular example. And between the photos, I want a delay of three seconds. So it will take one photo, delay three seconds, take the next photo, delay three seconds, on and on and on and on, until we actually, you know, complete the process. So then we're going to drop down here. You can either autofocus or manual focus. So if you manual focus, it'll just save you a little bit of time, not much, but it won't fire off the autofocus button. So you can set that on or off. Uh, wait for trigger. We'll talk about this later on. Then I have bulb mode. If I have set up bulb mode, when it fires off, it will Assume that you have it set for a bulb on the camera and hold the trigger down for whatever period of time that you set here. So one thing that you should be aware of is that the delay between shots takes effect after the bulb mode finishes up. Okay, so I'm not going to do a bulb mode on this case here. So I'm going to take 10 shots, delay 3 seconds between each other, and I'm ready to go. So I'm just going to go trigger. Now that starts all the action. And you can see what happens if you go to the home page here. We have a statistics. So this is showing me the total number of photos that I shot this particular session. And this one shows me the total number of photos that I've shot since I've turned on the inner velometer. So we're waiting, and you can see that it's taking photo, 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 and then this should be the last photo, and we should be complete now. Okay, so now let's go back to the camera here, and uh, we can also see that we have a selection here on triggers. So if we wait for a trigger, nothing's going to fire off until we get this particular scenario. The range that any one of these sensors has has to be between 10 and 100. Okay, so let's see what's going to happen here. I'm going to just take one photo. Well, no, I'll take two photos. I'll take two photos and delay five seconds between each photo. Now that's only going to happen until we get this scenario here. Okay, so here we go. 
and let's see what happens. Now I'm going to go home, and now you're going to start seeing laser measurements show up here. Nothing is taken yet until I trip it. And then see, my last laser measurement was 22 centimeters, and it took two photos. That's the cool thing about this particular type of uh, uh, system. You can set a distance, and it'll just wait, wait, wait until something triggers that falls within that distance. Okay. You can also take just a single button, a single photo. So I'm standing here, I'm inside my kitchen, my, uh, my volometer is outside on the porch, my camera's outside on the porch and it's pointing at the birds. I see a bird show up and I just want to take one single photo. So I just, let's go here first. We got 2 and 12. Remember that, 2, 12. Go back here, I'll take one single photo. Go back here. Now you see one show up here, and the 12 is now 13. The last laser measurement is whatever was left over from the previous run because the laser doesn't run continuously. It only runs if you tr trigger it. So that allows me to do one heck of a lot of, uh, of fun stuff. Oh, bulb mode. Why would I want to use bulb mode? Well, let's say that I want to take photos of the stars. Now, the exposure time on the stars is roughly around 20 seconds or so and uh, for each photo. So, generally, I'm going to take a lot of photos. Um, I might take 100 photos. I'm going to take them um, maybe with a a slight delay of two seconds. I'm going to put the bulb mode down for 20 seconds. So what's going to happen is it's going to fire off 100 photos. And at each photo, it's going to use the bulb mode and go 20 seconds on the exposure. Now, that's what this thing does. It, it really lets you take a lot of photos with it however you want it and it's then you will we're going to take these photos and we can stack them later and we'll get some very nice star photography out of this thing also if I start something up here and I really don't want it to do anything all they have to do let's say I'm going to trigger this one here in bulb mode so now if I go here I'm going to start seeing stuff happen now, since I've had a 20-second bulb mode, it's going to take a while before you're going to see that thing, you know, advance to the next one. And since I had 20 seconds, 20 seconds is an awful long time period. So, there we go. There's the next one. But I decided, okay, I screwed up. All i got to do is reset. And that will automatically stop everything. So, it will prevent any more... So you can set up the next one and, and trigger it. Okay. The sensors. What this does is this allows me to test the sensors. Uh, up here is the number of samples that I want to view. And uh, over here is which sensor I'm going to work with. Now, the only sensor I got attached at the current time period is a laser because I really, really like it. I'm going to fire off... Uh, let's say 50,000 samples of the laser and start. So I go home here and you should start seeing sensing sensor readings coming in. Now it doesn't take long to do 50,000 shots so that's why that's how come we're seeing this thing go. I can't really stop it but anyways I'm going to go back to the sensors and this time I'm going to do 20 and I'm going to put my hand in front of the sensor and start go home and you see it was only uh, less than 30 centimeters so the ultrasound sensor is really between 30 centimeters and like 600 and 700 or 800 I got it pointing at the wall and it might be picking up my camera or something like that that's way out there or it might even be picking up that little 
I got I got something sticking up off my laser. Uh, and that might be being picked up. So the intervalometer is a lot of fun. Uh, in the future, there's RTC. Uh, this is what I use to set up the timer that's within the Arduino. But since I don't have uh, the rest of the code in here yet for that, I was thinking about a possibility of, okay, I set up a time, and I say, don't start your intervalometer until 4 o'clock this evening, and stop it at 7 o'clock this evening. I could do something like that. That's pretty simple to do. But I really didn't see any purpose for that, so I said, well, you know, I won't put that in yet. But that's very, very simple to do. Okay, so that's the generic run for this whole thing. Uh, I think you get the gist of what it's trying to do. All right, now you're going to have to connect up to the intervalometer. And I didn't show you that, but I'll show you that now. Since the intervalometer is running on a, on a Wi-Fi on its own particular network, we need to attach to it. So if you have a smartphone, if you have a tablet, you would have no problems. On my computer here, I have a ThinkStation, which has a wireless. So what we're going to do here is we're going to bring up the Wi-Fi settings, bring that up. And then it's going to say, show available networks. We're going to see the intervalometer. Now, I know I spelled that wrong, but this is the intervalometer over here. And I'm going to say, connect. That's it. I should be connected. And then I can go back into my thing over here. Let's reconnect up. And voila. I'm connected. Now, unless I shut down the uh, intervalometer, uh, this will that will not get reset until I re 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 reboot. Okay, that's how easy it is to connect up. Now let me shut this down over here. And let's get back into. I don't think we want to go through the software. I don't know how many people are really interested in uh, in it. The whole idea here is to show you what we can do. Now, the uh, there's a ton of Arduino uh, intervalometers out there, tons of them. Uh, generally, they all require switches. They all require a button. They all require something, and they're not web-based. Uh, I try to differentiate. Mine is web-based, and there are very few of those out there, but there are some. Um, this is my type. I am web-based and I have sensors that trigger it. So if you have any questions, you know, just put them in the comments and we'll see what to do. There's a lot of software, so I'm not really uh, too uh, whoopy about publishing all of the software I got just to get this done. But, you know, I'll consider it. All right. Thank you and uh, have fun shooting.